Hello everyone and welcome to our, uh, our weekly edition of Walt Wines, uh, our virtual happy hour that um, features a number of great people and I'm super excited today for today's guest. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jeff Sapelli. I'm the general manager for Walt Wines and we host our virtual happy hours every week at four o'clock on our Instagram live. So thanks so much for joining us today. We've got two incredible wines. And uh, for those of you who would like to sip along with us at home, we have a new promotion called our Red, White, and New uh, promotion. You can get those wines just in time for 4th of July if you're interested, or just order them as you go throughout the summer. Um, so thank you so much for everyone who's joining us online. Wow, we've got a lot of people coming on today because of our guests. Um, so without uh, you know further ado, I would love to bring her on. So this is one of our new friends. Uh, she is a huge uh, star on Instagram. She's from California, which is awesome. I love California, she's born in LA. She's an alumni of USC. So for those of you who are from the University of Oregon, like myself, we might have a back and forth on that, but that's okay. She's currently a reporter for the Tennis Channel. She's worked for ESPN. I watched her cover various sports for years and I'm super excited to have Aaron Coscarelli on. Aaron, are you here? You ready to drink some wine? And there you are. Hi, you guys. What's going on, Jeff? Thank you. It's great to have you. I think you may have. Are you still Is there? my internet not working? Uh oh. Oh dear. Nope. You're there. You're there. Oh good. That's good. Yeah. I imagine. I imagine as we go through this, there's the various. Uh, you know, technical difficulties that are always so fun to have when you do these, you know, stay in place. But I love that you pair it with wine. So it makes it a lot much more fun. So yeah, it, it gets you through all of those really sticky situations, right? I'm sure you've been a reporter for years. And um, well, actually, not that long. You're, you're, you're not that old. Um, Very seasoned. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, you've, you've got a good, re you've got a great resume. So you've, you've been working, you've worked for tennis, you've worked in football, you were in various sports. Um, yes. You covered everyone up here, if that's right. Yeah, I, um, part, one of my favorite career moves was getting to live in San Francisco because, hello, you're right there next to Napa and Sonoma. And yeah. my my um my father is a huge wine drinker, so uh -huh. every weekend was touring the different wineries and going wine tasting. So this okay. is like pinch myself getting to hang out with you guys today. So thanks well, for thanks. having me. It's pinch myself. So I do have a glass of wine, and I would love to start you with our brand new, just recently re released rosé. That's all right. I would love to. Let's do it. Let's do it. It feels like it's 200 degrees here. So I don't know how warm it is down there. So the way we do this is I just go ahead and try to pour this wine for you. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We practiced this. We oh, did. We did. There it is. And through the... <laughs> wow. What a strong pour. You really know I like my rosé. Cheers, well, by the way. I like my rosé. So we do. <laughs> we, so, um, so cheers to you. Thanks okay, for how do coming we, on. How do we do the cheers? Like this? Boop. Okay, cool. Like, like into the camera. There you go. Mm -hmm. Just like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That's so much fun. Thanks so much. Um, so this is our, uh, uh, it's a rosé of Pinot Noir. So there are many different ways to make rosé. You can make it from uh, several different grapes. We make it with Zinfandel for our Bach brand. But for Walt, for Walt, we're making it out of Pinot Noir. So we just take a very thin press out of the press of that grape to get the juice and a little bit of color. And we barrel it, uh, sorry, we age it in a barrel for about two months and then we really make it. So this is the 2000, I think we're having the 2018, but the 2019 just released. So for those of you who are ready for your Walt Rosé, it's here for you. So cheers. I, first of all, mm -hmm. I, it's so delicious. I just want to drink this morning, noon, and night. I don't know if working at Walt is um, damaging Conducive. your halt because this is what you would want to drink all the time. But no, it really is such a special. And honestly, I say this in all in all truth. I'm not really um, a rosé drinker. I would uh -huh. say I'm more of a Pinot, Pinot okay. Noir. So if I'm a Pinot Noir fan, mm -hmm. is this a kind of rosé that I would like? Yeah, wow, you're right off with the questions. You are, you are. A I'm sorry, aren't you? I can't help it. I cannot help it. But I was I'm like, isn't this my job? It's my show. No, but truly, Jeff, I'm not really a lighter wine drinker. Mm -hmm. And 
I swear on the Holy Bible, this is very good. So is, is that is that because it's a Pinot Noir or is it just a really excellent, you know, bottle of rosé? Well, it's, still, it's totally both, of course, Aaron. Um, but no, the um, so rosé is, is made, we want a little bit of textural, uh, of a textural quality in the wine. So red wine drinkers tend to enjoy the tannins that are in red wine. That's that drying sensation that kind of courses across your palate. We, we want to find tannins in the recesses of our palate as opposed to right up front. And so a little bit of barrel aging in what's called neutral oak. So that's oak that doesn't express that vanilla flavor or that oaky flavor that you get sometimes with Chardonnay. Uh, we make Chardonnay. Um, so you still get the really clean flavors, but it does bring in a little bit of texture and a little bit more volume on the palate. And I think for red wine drinkers, that's probably why you enjoy uh, this wine. It's, it's not dissimilar um, if you think about champagne that's made in barrel. So think about Krug or Bonger. Those are uh, bigger styles of Pinot Noir made into a white wine. And so that's a, just a, a little bit of an analogy. I, I guess but I'm not going to throw myself it. to Krug. No, I was going to say lots of volume on the taste buds. And, uh -huh. you know, if you can't go out and enjoy summer traditionally, which is why I love that you're doing this sip series, mm -hmm. bring the summer to your to taste buds. You yeah. know what I mean? Maybe so, we'll call it a summer's day rosé. Summer's day rosé. This is perfect. And so this is, when did this recently get barreled? Like, is this a, this season or? Um, so we, um, everything is harvested usually in early September. And for rosé, okay. you're going to maybe pick a little bit earlier because you're going to go for less fruit, less, less sugar, more acid, so a little brighter mm -hmm. wine. Yeah. And then we're going to ferment it. So think about, you know, another two weeks that goes into that process. After it's fermented, it goes to barrel for a very short period of time. So maybe through the end of the winter, December. Um, in this case, I think we actually took it out of barrel the first week of January. And then mm. it gets stabilized. So that means we just put it into a tank and we let it get cold and we let things kind of mellow out. And then we actually take it to bottle. And so this was bottled actually very recently in May and just released out now in, uh, in the end of June. So yeah, thank you. Your, um, your production team told me to ask you the hard questions. So yes, you know yes. when you're with a sports journalist, you're gonna be asked the hard questions, just making okay. sure you know, just making uh -huh. sure you're yes, well yes. briefed on what's going on here because obviously I know all the answers. I'm just quizzing you now at this point. Okay, sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I have some questions for you too. Don't worry. I, I'm okay. Last one. This is it. This is the no, last no, one. Going. What would be the perfect food to pair with a rose? Mm, yes. Um, well, the, the perfect thing to pair with rose is a pool or an ocean, usually. That, those are the two things. Ah, that, uh, yes. I, as a Megan, pool of rosé would be great. A pool of rosé. That, that, we can do that. Um, that's a lot of, that's I a lot like of wine to spill in a pool. That. We can do that. <laughs> um, you think about a pool, it's about 8,000 gallons. We can do the math backwards, but um, it's not quite okay. as much rosé as we make. We only make about 700 cases of rosé, so it's a pretty small bottling. And that's not going to translate to a giant pool, but it's a big mm. enough bath. where we Jacuzzi. We, yeah. We could enjoy it, um, for sure. <laughs> we'll mail you down some. You can put it in your jacuzzi in, L in LA as you're on those cold nights that you get. Um, but I think, so, I mean, I always go to, for me, it's a lobster roll or it's oh. um, shellfish. I think, I think of rosé and I think of Cape Cod. So I think of anything mm. that's going on on the East Coast. Um, those are all great. You know, oysters, things like that. Those are, those are really nice um, and, and the oysters have that nice briny saltiness. And so that's where I would go. So now I'm hungry. So now we should know, just take thanks. this and we'll just go to the, the restaurant. We, we can yeah. sit there and eat together yeah. from yeah. 600 miles away. So are you, are you in LA today? Yeah, so I, even though I worked in part of what you were talking about, which was one of the best years of my life, getting to go up to the Bay Area and cover all those teams, yeah. like the Warriors, the Giants, the Niners, and eating so many lobster rolls, which are my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, I do live in LA. I grew up born and raised in the Pasadena area. So I born and raised in okay. Los Angeles and they do have some, you know, decent wines down here. But when I went up there to, um, to move up there for work, there is nothing like what the wines are up in the Napa Valley area, of yeah. course. So it was a, it was a treat. I really think my dad was more excited about the location that I was living in and the 
adjacent wineries close by than the actual job opportunity. He was just yeah. happy that I was going to be somewhere close to Napa. And I used to cover the Raiders when I was up there, and that's where their training camp is. So yeah. it wasn't coincidence that Bob would call and say, you know, how's training camp going? Do you need any visitors? Mm -hmm. Mom and I are just a short flight away. If you're ever interested, you can come up there. So Yeah, um, I got to meet Charles Woodson because for a very short period of time, he was making wine with us um, at Hall. So Wow. What's Charles Woodson's favorite? Do you remember? This is a tough question. He's a question. big cab guy. Huge big, ca big okay. cab guy. Um, yeah. Although he's making a number of different wines now, but 24 is still, I think, his outstanding Cabernet Sauvignon. He, and he's won awards for that. And actually, he stole one of our employees, which was, you know, mean. That's so Rick Ruiz, if you're mean. out there. We're still mad about that. Um, but hey, I had some questions for you. So you've covered sports for a while now. You've, you've had, oh, there you are. Um, we've had, you've had a number of great interviews. Um, but I wanted to ask you some, some questions about the, uh, your top five moments, if that's okay. Wow, top five moments. Okay, sure, go ahead. Let's so we'll start it. with the easy one, right? The easiest okay. one is what's your, what's your most memorable sports interview? Okay, this is memorable for all the wrong reasons. But <laughs> okay. one of my favorite all-time actors is Paul Rudd. And Paul Rudd happens to be a huge Chiefs fan. Pat Mahomes, yeah. obviously. Uh, this was two years ago. And it was at the NFL Honors. And um, I had no idea Paul Rudd was, I knew he was going to be in the audience. I didn't know mm -hmm. I was going to be able to get to interview him. So okay. when you're met face to face with one of your all time favorite actors, like I love This Is 40. Have you ever seen This Is 40? Yeah. I mean, there's not a Paul Rudd movie that you don't like, Clueless. So anywho, it wasn't- Clueless, oh yeah, okay, yep. Right, I'm telling you, this guy's got longevity. Mm -hmm. And he wore a jacket, like a blazer jacket, but then imprinted on the back of it was Pat Mahomes' jersey number. Uh -huh. And he was like the most gregarious, outgoing, thoughtful, kind guy. And I just, I just, I just asked him like boring football questions. <laughs> I was like, what? I have the funniest guy here. And I just kept it to football. So when uh -huh. I look back, I was like, it was a great interview. And he was so wonderful and so kind, which of course you would think Paul Rudd is. Yeah. Um, but when presented with someone as iconic and silly as Paul Rudd, I really wanted to bring out the inner Coscarelli, which is like, I'm a total goofball and make my yeah. dad proud. Nice. Um, but I just was, I was just kind of, you know, like kept it to football because he's a huge Chiefs fan, which yeah. I'm sure this past year he was very happy about that. But uh, yeah, Paul Rudd was an amazing interview because he was so wonderful and kind and thoughtful and just everything you hope a famous actor is. Yeah. Um, but I was like, you know, kind of like, Meh. I was not so cool. I didn't feel well, cool in that moment. You know, well, I needed to, to drink more of rosé probably. Been better. Well, hopefully Paul's <laughs> following you right now because I saw that on your Instagram. And for those of you who don't follow you on Instagram, it's a really cool, uh, like there's all kinds, like you're all over the place. I think that was at the Super Bowl. Um, and he's literally wearing a Mahomes yes. like suit that he yes. clearly had custom made. And, and of course the chiefs beat my 49ers last year. And so I'm still bitter about that, but that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, he was wonderful. Despite the fact that he kicked the pants out of your team. He is such a <laughs> wonderful guy. I'm sure a lot of people watching this are actually Niner fans because I covered the Niners too. Yeah. So a lot of those wonderful fans, those wonderful 49er fans stayed with me despite the fact that I moved back to LA. But okay. um, yes, Paul Rudd is just, a, he's probably watching. In fact, I'm really sorry, Paul. You, I could tell we were going to be silly and goofy, but I, I'm sorry that I just kind of kept it to football. I'm sure it was really boring for you. But next time, next time when yeah. you're back there, because the Chiefs will probably be back again. Right, He's making sorry. millions on, um, well, we have someone who just said Paul Rudd is my dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's probably yes, making millions with the, with the Marvel show. So I think he's, I don't think he's too mad at you. He's, no. he's like, whatever you want to do. All right, next yeah, question. Sure. Okay. Easy question. Worst football uniform. Gosh, worst. Do, okay, college, pro can be anything. Pro. We'll go pro. Okay, you know, I don't, 
I'm going to hear a lot of blowback about this because there's a lot of people that love the Steelers throwback Bumblebee oh, okay. jersey. All right. I thought you were going to take Bumblebee, out the traditional. The Bumblebee jersey that the Steelers rock, it is so darn distracting, Jeff. Mm -hmm. All I see are stripes and chaotic situation. There is no flow. I'm sorry, Steelers fans. If you're watching, I apologize. But I Eric, don't want... Eric Ebron's mad at you right now. He just went I, there. I I like I like the vintage uh, I like the vintage jerseys I like the Rams vintage jerseys I like oh, really? the Niners I but I the the Steeler Bumblebee situation still scars me every time I I see them play on the football field so yeah there you there you go mine's easy it's the Seahawks they're also uh, your your boy Tom or your your boy Carol um, Pete Carroll uh, Pete sorry not Tom I love him uh, yes love well. He's with the Seahawks now, and he's with and he was with USC before that, and I was an Oregon Duck. So, but you've got my guy now down at the the LA Chargers, Justin. So that Justin Herbert's going to be great, I think. What is your favorite? So you're in tennis. You, you're covering tennis now a little bit, I think, for the Tennis Channel. Um, and I right. know that's new. But what's your most all time favorite tennis match? You know what? I love vintage Pete. Sampras. Uh, I like grew up loving Pete Sampras. So anytime I don't, I don't, I know it's, uh, you know, it's maybe not necessarily the most iconic, but there is something about for me growing up and I, I, maybe I'm dating myself, but growing up and watching Sampras on TV that just kind of gave me the confidence in my opinion, as a competitor yeah. Watching Sampras compete. So anytime he took on any of the, the, the greats, I mean, you know, Sampras is, I don't know. It, it, for me, it's like watching Mia Hamm on right. TV. Like those Absolutely. legends and those icons t brings me right back to little Aaron on the couch with my brothers. Mm -hmm. My brother's truly dictated everything that I watched on TV from basketball to wrestling Saturday uh -huh. mornings. I had no control over the remote when okay. it came to Saturday mornings because I had to watch wrestling, The Undertaker and all those legends. Um, but you know, my, it was funny because my dad is a, is a huge tennis fanatic. Um, my mom is more of the surfer. And okay. then my brothers were football basketball fans. So, uh -huh. like, I had a nice sprinkling. And then I tried to just watch the darn Care Bears. No <laughs> respect for the baby sister. Um, but, no. no, yeah, I would, I would say, like, vintage what? Gem. You remember Gem? Oh, yeah. Oh, so wait, did you watch the Care Bears as well? I had two little, I had two, I have oh. two sisters. So, yes, I have oh. all the way around. Oh, two sisters. Sure, you secretly liked them, too. But, no, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I liked... Like that growing up and really falling in love oh, with sports. Sorry, Aaron. It looks like oh, we may have... you? Yep. You're still here. You're good. Are you back? Okay. We're good. Yeah. So I'd actually like to pour you another wine, if that's all right. I know that we're... I, I don't know how often you get a chance to do something like maybe this, but this is very common for us to go... Fault? Okay, we're back. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's, I don't know. There's something in the water today, I guess, with the internet. So this is our wine lab. Um, wow. And, um, Are you sure that's where... not your, your kitchen? That looks amazing, by the way. <laughs> no, so we make wine from as far north as the Willamette Valley to all the way to the Santa Rita Hills. And so all of the wines that you're seeing are the different lots of Pinot Noir from all the way from the state of Oregon, all the way to Santa Barbara County. And the corners is kind of, if you were to look about mm. just to the right of the screen as it's coming across, it's on the northern side. So it's going to be closer to us. And I would, this is the wine I would love to pour for you, if that's all right. So we have, Let's this is our it. 2017. I'm going to try to get out of the little screen. There we go. And so I can pour you a glass without actually. So wow. 2017, the that was corners. Fast. Oh, I need to you went corner. from your lab to your kitchen. That was very quick. I like that. Yeah. 
it's okay. the it's the it's the mystery of the internet. All right, so I've got your glass. Okay, here we go. Over there. All right. Oops, sorry. There you go. Okay. More. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> well, don't fumble. Don't fumble that, Jeff. That was a very strong pour. You know I like my Pinots. Yeah, so this is a red wine. So I'd love for you to try it. Um, and I'll and I'll ask you about what you think of this wine. This is from our estate in the Anderson Valley. So this is a place that's really far north of uh, San Francisco, about two and a half hours. Oh my gosh. This Ooh. is excellent. This is like tap dancing on your taste buds. I like that. Yeah. Can I use that? Yeah, this is Aaron so... Costarelli tap dances with Corners Pinot Noir. So this is uh, from a, uh, the Corners is actually the name of a town, it's the town of Boonville, and they have their own language and it's called Bootling. And they would say things like ball horny, which means good drinking or cheers. So cheers. I'm sorry, to... say that one more time. So Corners is the name of the town of Boonville. Okay. And, they, and the citizens of Boonville have their own language and it's called Bootling. It's, in a, it's in a, just an English dialect. And they have words that are different. And one of those words is ball horning. It's actually ball two horning. words. Cool. And that means good ball horning drinking. So cheers. Ball, ball horning. horning. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to use that, Thank Jeff. You. Yeah, please. Good drinking. I want you to stump your next uh, football star who thinks they know about wine. Say, I know about Boonville and I know about Pinot Noir from there. Do you know ball what ball horning, horning means? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. Absolutely. No, but this is very, um, you know, I, I would say that, as I had mentioned earlier, I love Pinot Noir. It's just, I prefer a little bit lighter than the vintage bold cabs that my dad drinks. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and this is, it just, like I said, it, it's like tap dancing on your taste buds. And that, I meant to say that on purpose because it's very smooth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's it's really smooth. It's um, a little sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I smell a little jammy berry um, flavor profile. Can you can you look at you? Me? That's great. You're doing a great job. And then my we dad always used to say, "Look at the legs," which means very yeah. jammy, right? Um, legs are usually just viscosity in the wine, and so they tend to form um, as the as the wine grips to the edge of the glass, and and it it has. Really very little uh, meaning to the quality of the wine, but it does mm. present a nice little talking point when you talk about the legs in a wine. Uh, mm. But like, you know, lighter bodied wines like Riesling have almost no legs. The fuller wines like Zinfandel tends to have more legs. So there's legs all over the place and you just have to find your own. These um, are long <laughs> legs. <They're laughs> These are long, long legs. legs. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Catherine uh, Walt Hall is the owner of the winery and her husband, Craig, before he knew anything about wine, the only thing he knew about wine was that it had good legs. And so he loves to use that joke at the winery at all of our winery events. That's Bob. That's my dad for you. He says that all the time. It's awfully embarrassing, but. It's, yeah, hashtag dad joke, right? As corny as it gets, but he, that's where, that's what, that's like, I would say, um, that's my, that's my lead in line. Okay. Ball morning. Ball horn. There you go. So we had a couple. So I, one of the things that I'm always um, amazed at is, is great reporters like yourself can, can pretty much ask any question in any environment. It's going to be loud. It'll be noisy. You'll have players that are super excited. They just won the Super Bowl, or um, maybe they just won a, a game. And you're like trying to interview them, right? And you're like, I want to get a quote from you. I want to get the story from you. And it's all spontaneous on the fly because some guy could come behind them and slap them in the head or dump mm. water over their head. So we had a couple, uh, we set up a couple of videos, and we were wondering if you would have a follow up question to those videos. Ooh. If that's all right. Play a little game yes. right now. I love it. Okay, let's hear all it. All right. Oh, okay. All right. So we're, I'm going to play you a video, one. and you give me the follow up question to that. Okay, let's see it. So this is the winery. Okay. And we're working on the, this is actually during fermentation, we have a cap. And what we're actually what we're doing is sending the cap down. What would your follow up question to that be? You are sending. Well, I first I need to get a play by play of the action. So you're sending mm -hmm. the cap down to press yes. voraciously this amazing red wine. Right? Is uh -huh. it going to be red wine? Obviously. Yeah, that's right? red wine. Those are red grapes. So, um, 
in that moment, what were you thinking when you viciously and so decidedly decided uh -huh. to press down on that? What were your expectations heading into that moment, Jeff? Well, so Aaron, thank you for that question. Um, you know, it's really all about the team and it's all about, you know, uh, making sure that my teammates are there for me when I'm mm. about to make that move. And so that's one of our team members right there. I had been in the field mm. earlier that day, just really going through the vineyard and tasting a lot of the beautiful uh, grapes that were out. And I right. just really wanted to get them in. And so it was just incredible for us that we had this machine that was built by this, uh, infamous architect his name was jared denton and and it was a pneumatic press that we could very quickly get things into press very mm. quickly start to disrupt the fermentation so that it produced a very lovely wine for you that you can try today wow and then and then my <laughs> last my last follow-up would be how much pressure did you feel you were under to make sure you got the perfect wine because jeff this is perfect wine <laughs> So, so there's lots of pressure that goes into it. Thank you. I'm, I appreciate that. There's nothing, we don't ever call it a perfect wine because we always think that we can make it better and we can always, you know, coach ourselves to be better. But in this case, I don't even know how I'm going to follow this. I'm probably not a character. So ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. So we did have one more. So I love um, that. So we have uh, another video and I'd like your take on this. Okay. So, this, oh, so silly things happen all the time on the football okay. field and also okay. all over the place. What would you say to something like this? I would say that guy definitely needs more rosé. He is enjoying his summer bod. And I'm not sure, is that a dance or a march? I'm not quite sure. I love so, the glasses, but what is exactly happening here in this moment? <laughs> that is actually, um, that was, that is all for Moray. She's our producer for oh. these shows. She's, uh, she works in our, our marketing department for Catherine Walthall, and she wanted me to play that super badly. Unfortunately, you can't see that there's a bottle that's actually on top of my head. So I was uh, going through the process of dancing while I put a bottle of Walt Pinot Noir. Whoa. On my head. That feels awfully risky and talented all at the same time. Yeah. I mean, you never know. It's live TV, so anything is possible, right? <laughs> I mean, I would never even think to do such a dangerous... Can you got dangerous... that? This is a bottle no, of water. Let's try it. I will try it, too. Let's try okay. it with Boop, Not going to work. How I'm do I'm going to use that? this in the preview. Uh, you lots have of gel. a very flat head. <laughs> you just take a lot of gel, and you put it in your hair, and then it sticks. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Because I'm very competitive. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That. Wow. Bravo. Okay. I don't know if I can do any better on live Instagram than that. No, that deserves I think a you sip. Just nailed it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you. Thank That's you. That pressure. was amazing. It's a lot of pressure. So I wanted to know um, the football season, we're still playing ball. Um, you you cover a lot of fantasy football and you know a lot of great, great players out there in and out we'll see what happens um who should i be taking in my first round of the fantasy football draft this year <sighs> all right chef i'm gonna ask you on a scale of one to ten how serious do you play fantasy football though like are you a legit player are you like oh i have daughters um, and they're watching care bears um and I, bears you know, is I'm, gone. Oh, is it gone? Um, okay, that's right. Yeah, Sorry. I think it, well, I think it was around a couple years ago. Um, so I, so I, what I would say is I'm a eight. I'm the commissioner, so I have to be pretty good at it. Oh, um, okay. Then I'm dealing At least for one expert. more year. I'm dealing, yeah. I'm I mean, dealing I know what I'm doing. with an expert. I'm dealing with an expert. Okay, so then, mm -hmm. then you know this already, but I would suggest, Mm -hmm. First of all, never draft a quarterback in the first round. People do that, and it's like, why do you do that? I do not care yep. how athletic the quarterback is. Do not draft a quarterback until at least, like, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. You, there's so much good talent out there. You don't need to get a quarterback. You know this okay. already because okay. you're a, a, a commissioner. But what I, I absolutely would, agree. What I would suggest is getting a dynamic running back. Find a running back in the first round, if you can. Uh, Saquon Barkley, obviously, the offense runs through him. Adam Get Russia. an Alvin Kamara. Yes, okay, so you know. He was a little up and down. He had some injuries that were, like, 
driving us all crazy. Um, right. Ruined but my I year. Would, I would get... I would get right because you're like okay he's good now right I can put him in now and then you know you get hampered by the injuries and he yeah um but I would find a dynamic running back I think okay uh there's a lot of good talent when it comes to wide receivers mm -hmm. when it comes to dynamic running backs like I'm talking Alvin Kamara like we mentioned a Saquon Barkley a Zeke Elliott obviously Christian McCaffrey Get a guy that can get you points through the air and on the ground, and I think you'll have a better shot at winning your league, Kamish. It's just like Appropriate round for a tight end. Depends on the tight end. Um, but I, I, I had made the mistake. Who did I get as a tight end? Um, was it – who was it? Oh, my goodness. I'm drawing a blank. I made a, a very embarrassing mistake by drafting, I can't remember which particular tight end it was, but it was obviously like a very legit tight end. And it doesn't, who was it? No, I didn't get Kyle Rudolph. That's my husband. My husband ah. gives me fantasy football advice, even though he secretly loves <laughs> fantasy football. He's like, I hate yeah. fantasy football because it uh -huh. drives him crazy. But I still, I still don't think, I, I, again, I still think with a quarterback, you can find a, a good legit tight end really yeah. when you need to get a tight end. Yeah, I would Kittle think Town. George Kittle. Right. Um, but that wasn't the tight end. Why can't I think of the tight end? It's, Olsen, no. No, no, not for Olsen. No, no. Who's the guy in Seattle? He totally flopped. He was like, went through Green Bay. Are you thinking of Jimmy Graham? Yes. Jimmy was the example of the. He was a great tight end back in the and day. And then, boof. And then, boof. Yeah, boof. I hate when the boof happens. That's the problem, which boof. is you never know. It's like, is he going to have the boof or not? Um, but yes, I would say don't get a tight end too soon. There's plenty of great quality tight ends. And then, like you said, like, you can find a George Kittle type player. Yeah. They can emerge. So don't draw too quick. Like no. stack your roster with legit dynamic running backs because those are hard to find. Running mm -hmm. backs get injured. So find yeah. those, save them up, and then stack your, your, your roster with really great uh, wide receivers and, right. and potential rookies that you can take chances on. And I would just pad your roster in that in that regard. Don't and, don't waste your picks on quarterbacks or tight ends. And will you draft a kicker in your first in 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 the draft? Will you draft a kicker? Wow! That did you see my teams last year? Because that is so funny that you said that. I um I did not draft quick kickers. I just streamed them like defenses because yeah. I I didn't feel like I needed to waste a pick on a kicker right kicker Sorry, kickers. Are, kickers are people too which is what we always yeah. say in football but um i just think i would rather take a chance on a breakout can't like a breakout rookie yeah. than waste a pick on a kicker or a defense so i used yeah. to always stream them i mean you know and if i think we're gonna have a season I think mm -hmm. we might not have quite the same preseason. I think we might only have two preseason games. Which is games. totally fine with me because the preseason is lame and it kills all my fantasy players. Right. Who who gets, who gets drafts players, they get injured during the preseason, and then you're like, what the heck? Draft as late as you can, commish. And um, I feel like, by the way, I'm just side note, This inter yeah. these interviews get better yeah. as yeah. – like the drinking continues. <laughs> yeah. Is that what We just happens? need to drink earlier. Yeah. yeah. You have to start yeah, okay. drinking earlier and then we get kind of get into the link. Yeah. Progressively, Jeff, you have to be honest. Do the interviews with your guests get better after time goes on? You're like, yeah, um, Well, you've been great because you're on TV and you know how to do these. Um, but I would definitely say we've had some that started really slow. <laughs> and then they got better. They get better progressively as you go through. So you had a contest, and I wanted to thank you so much for launching that contest on Instagram. Oh, what did we um, find out? Okay, wait, stay with the contest. So, so according to, because I have spies, and uh, they, were, they were able to figure this out, um, the winner of the rosé, what are you drinking, rosé or Pinot Noir, right. was Pinot Noir. So <gasps> Pinot Noir won. Pinot beat the rosé. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was shocked. It's a hot summer day. I, but, you know, clearly, you know. Well, okay. What does Jeff say about that, Jeff? What would you say? 
Uh, more puppies? is better. More is better. It doesn't matter. As long <laughs> as it's Walt wine, as long as it's one of these two, um, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, Aaron, I wanted to thank you for coming on and for being such a good sport about all the qu about sports questions. You were incredible. You know your wines really, really well. So I want to um, invite you to come see us because it would be really awesome to do this in, again in person. And we're open. So uh, as soon as you feel safe to travel, I hope that you'll come visit one of our tasting rooms. We have one in Sonoma, we have one in Napa, and we have one in Healdsburg. So there's three different places for you to visit. And the great news is you guys are currently open. So I will be yes. making a trip, maybe yes. several trips, if you don't mind. Please do. We would love to have you as much as possible. And did you have anything else for, for the viewers on Instagram, all the people that have come to say hi? I am just grateful to be a part of this because selfishly I get to enjoy very good quality wine and talk yes. with experts like you. So, I mean, you know, just let me know when you want me back. I'll, I'll be there now. <laughs> We'd love to. I think your colleague's going to be on. We have Trail Davis coming on next week. Um, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll ask him if he, want, he wants to do a little, you know, split the show with you. We could like do five different little, little bars on your phone. Terrell Davis is one of the kindest, awesomest guys and people that are watching, I highly recommend checking out his IG live because he's actually way more. I know you're really impressed with my knowledge about wine. No, you're good. He, you're really good. he beats me in that regard because um, he is a big wine fanatic. So the fact that he was so amped to be a part of this too, which says a lot about the quality of wine. So thank you for that. having, thank you for having me. I will see you soon. Thank and you. We'll, we'll do this again. Yes. And, and so thank you. This is Erin Coscarelli. Please check her out on her Instagram page and all the different. Uh, she's the, one of the hardest working women in journalism and sports right now. Erin, um, thank you for coming. For those of you who are checking us out, uh, keep in mind that we have the red, white and new sets available. And Catherine will be on on the Hall Wines Instagram tomorrow at four o'clock. Aaron, cheers to you, Ball Horning. Ball Horning. I was just looking for what it's called. It's called Ball Horning. Thank you guys for having me. You're amazing. And cheers.